Hello and welcome. This video is for readers of Empire of Iron, which is the third and the last novel in the Vesta Shadows trilogy, a series that spans the later years of the Republic to the first years of the Empire. Many of the characters, events, and elements that you'll read about in my books are found on ancient Roman coinage. So in these videos, I'm showing you coins from my collection that depict some of these things. So let's get started. In the prologue of Empire of Iron, we see a fictional Vestal named Tacita. She's something of a legendary figure in the series, and she's facing off against an invader. During this confrontation, she prays to the goddess, seeking permission to do a certain thing. And when she does this, she prays to Vesta Sancta, which is just Latin for Holy Vesta. That sentiment is shown on this coin. It's from around 200 CE, and it's a coin of the Empress Julia Domna. Here you can see Vesta standing and draped with her head veiled. You can see she's holding a scepter here, and in her other hand, she's holding an offering dish. And if you look here, you can see the letters V-E-S-T-A-E -E and then S-A-N-C-T-A-E, which is actually Latin, for to Holy Vesta. If you've watched some of the previous videos, you might remember that we've seen coins that say Vesta Mater for Mother Vesta, Vesta Felix for Fortunate Vesta, or something along those lines, Vesta Eterna for Eternal Vesta, and now this one, Holy Vesta. So very pretty. All right, moving on. In the novel, you may remember that Tiberius arranges for games in honor of Augustus, and as part of this, he has a unique medallion and an aureus designed for the emperor. I put this in the book because apparently Augustus did collect coins himself, which is interesting, so you're in good company if you're a collector. In any event, the emperor's portrait is on the obverse of this fictional medallion, and it might have looked something like the portrait on this real coin. This is actually the obverse or front of a coin I showed you in another video. The other side depicts the Vestal Tarpeia, but here you can see a fairly young-looking emperor. This coin is from 19 BCE, so about a decade into the empire. You can see Octavian's very typical hairstyle, which you'll see in pretty much all official depictions of him. But just in case you missed that, his name is on it, Augustus and Caesar. So that's the front of this fictional medallion. And here's what I envisioned for the back of it. Here we see a depiction of the Vestals. I don't believe there's an actual ancient coin like this with Augustus on the front and the Vestals on the back, but I have seen a fantasy medal like this. Regardless, for the novel, I took inspiration from this reverse of a Julia Domna coin, and you have seen it in a previous video. You can see the Vestals and their stolas, their veils. You can see the simpulum one priestess is using to offer into the altar fire. In the book, Pomponia sees this image on the back of this gold medallion and sees herself as Vestalis Maxima offering into the hearth. And so I like to imagine that she is here doing just that. All right, so this is not a very good quality coin up next, but I wanted to show you another sacrificial implement here. This is actually a counterfeit coin, a contemporary counterfeit though, meaning that it was made in antiquity to be a fake. There's a scene in the novel where something falls and a priestess is cut by a smashed colulus. So I wanted to show you that here. At least I'm fairly certain that's what's being shown here. This is a neat coin of a Vestal. You can see that it says Vestalis for Vestal along the side here. So that's a contemporary counterfeit. But you might find it interesting that there is a certain artistry to reproducing ancient coins. They did it in the Renaissance. Uh, sometimes they're commemorative items. And I have a really cool thing in my collection. It's this huge copper medallion that is a large scale reproduction of an actual coin and a rare coin too. So here's another portrait of Augustus, but in this one, he's actually shed his mortal coil and is deceased. The real coin with his image was issued under Tiberius, but you can see Augustus' face, clearly his hair, and of course the letters D-I-V-U-S, A-U-G-U-S-T-U-S, P-A-T-E-R. So something like Divine Augustus, the father. So we see Augustus deified in the same way that Julius Caesar before him was, and indeed the way that the first king of Rome, Romulus, was deified. But what's equally interesting about this coin or this big medallion is the reverse. I know there's some debate about what temple this is. It is not the temple of Vesta in the forum, but there is reason to believe that it is the smaller shrine of Vesta on the Palatine Hill. And if that's the case, it might be the only image we have on coins of that shrine. This structure definitely factors into the storyline of Empire of Iron. So if you're a reader, you might find that interesting. But in a larger and more important sense, if it is the shrine on the Palatine, then it's just another example of how vital ancient coins are when it comes to understanding the world of ancient Rome. 
So I think this is a good place to end with this look at what is possibly Palatine Vesta. It leaves us with a little mystery, and maybe that's a good thing. That drive to know more, to keep discovering and digging, I think that's part of what makes this time in history so fascinating to so many of us. So thank you for watching and reading. Until next time, take care.